Remember that? Remember that? <clears throat> Two other times I said I wasn't going to disappear. And then I fucking disappeared again. <laughs> like, I'm, uh, I'm not going to make excuses. Um, but I am going to talk about why it's so hard for me to make videos in this video. Or why it's been, been so hard for me to make videos. And then hopefully making this video, talking about why it's hard for me, for me to make videos will make it easier for me to make videos, but I make no promises. Obviously, I can't be trusted. <laughs> um, I also realize I don't think I've ever, like, introduced myself like a normal person. So, if you're new here, hi, I'm Katie, and I'm an entire mess. If you're not new here, I really don't know what you're doing with your time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think today I'm going to talk about imposter syndrome and how it affects me, because... After talking with a bunch of friends about, you know, making videos and why I haven't been making videos and that I want to make videos, but then I don't, it's, it's just really dumb, but it's, it, you know, I've been turned on to the fact that it's, it's probably this fun little thing called imposter syndrome. And I'm going to be real with you. I've made this video, like, this is the third time, I think. So third time's a charm. I don't know. But I had notes, like a professional and then I threw them away because the last time I made this video, I thought, perfect, except um, it wasn't. <laughs> um, also, really quickly, I want to note, the rains have returned to Western Washington. So if you can hear something in the background, it's probably the torrential downpour happening outside. And I apologize for that, but I can't control the weather. So um, I guess without further nervous rambling... Let's just, uh, let's just kick this off. Here we go. Also, before I actually kick this off, uh, it's really awkward to talk about a, like, mildly serious subject and then also be like, and by the way, this is the product that I'm using. So, just for clarity's sake, I'm not going to try and be smooth about this because I'm not. Uh, it just looks even more awkward the less awkward I try to make it. So we're just going to embrace the awkward and just, just fucking send it <laughs> or whatever. All right. So now for real, we're going to get started. Oh, let me clip my hair back. Oh my God. I'm going to get there. I promise. Priming my eyes with the Anastasia Beverly Hills eye primer. This is basically the only eye primer I use anymore because it's that good. All right. And I'm not even paid to say that. One can hope, you know, one day. So imposter syndrome. Honestly, I didn't even know that that would be like what was holding me back. But after talking with like my mentor friend, friend, mentor, whatever. Um, her name's Adiola, Adiola K on Instagram, also on YouTube. You should check her out. She's an amazing human being. But I was basically asking her, you know, what I could do to be more consistent and like how she goes about just being as amazing on content as she is and why I was having such a hard time. And uh, one of the things that she said to me was that imposter syndrome is a bitch. And I was like, oh shit, is that what it is? And then I looked it up and I was like, oh shit, that's exactly what it is. Um, oh, really quickly. <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm just brushing the dust off here, man. I don't I don't know what to tell you. Um, I'm using the H and B Cosmetics Dare to Be Different palette, and right now I'm using the shade Rich. Um, so yeah, I was talking with her about like why I just that I was struggling, and when she pointed out, yeah, it's uh it's that imposter syndrome, I was like, oh shit, okay, let me look this up. So I did. And like I said, when I first made this video, I had really professional notes done. I had like cited a uh, really professional source from like psychology, some psychology paper, just to be professional as fuck. And then I threw my notes away and then I couldn't find the website again. So here we are. Um, but from what I understand, and I'm not a professional, I'd also like to note, I am in no way a professional psychologist, psychiatrist, life coach, therapist, none of that. I'm just running my mouth on the internet, so. But disclaimer over. Um, from what I understand, 
Imposter syndrome is the belief that you don't, like you're afraid that people will discover that you don't have what it takes or that you don't belong wherever it is that you're trying to like get or put yourself. And uh, <clears throat> that's me to a T. Uh, one of the other fun things about imposter syndrome is that you're afraid to be discovered as a fraud, which I know that I'm not a fraud, but like, I see the internet. I see what happens when people fuck up and, you know, cancel culture is crazy. And we say awful, hateful things to people on the internet through the safety of a keyboard, you know, like, you know, the likelihood of you ever having to face that person in real life is none. And the odds that you would say some of the crap that comes out of people's mouths online to someone's face is like pretty minimal. I mean, there's some crazy people out there, but you know, you're probably not going to walk up to a stranger and say something incredibly cruel to their face for no reason, but you'll do it on the internet. And that's like terrifying to me a little bit. I mean, not terrifying, but it does make me nervous. And so with the way people talk to each other on the internet and like the digging that some people will do on other people's lives, I'm like, God, I hope that I would, oh, I don't know if I could handle that. Like, I don't know if that's an aspect of being on YouTube or Instagram that I could really handle well that would really stress me out and then like what if somebody decided in their deep internet dive of me not that there's I mean not that I'm that th that interesting or that there's even that much on the internet about me but just I mean I, I like I said I see what happens to other people and I'm like shit man that's brutal like why are we being so cruel so it's hard for me to see that happening to other people and then be like yeah let me put my neck out there though let me just jump right into this shit show. And I do, like, I didn't originally think I was going to enjoy making YouTube videos, but I do. They make me super nervous because public speaking is not my strong suit. But for the most part, I've gotten really positive feedback. So why, why am I worrying about what somebody might say when for the most part, for the most part, I've gotten really positive feedback. You know, like, it just doesn't doesn't make sense. I'm gonna go ahead and throw on some black eyeliner. This just happens to be the closest one on hand. NYX slide on glide on way too long of a fucking name. Um, jet black eyeliner. Really good eyeliner. I, I've said it before and I'll keep saying it. It doesn't need that long of a name guys. So yeah just you know that fear of being found out to be a failure or a fraud is part of the reason why it's been so hard for me to do this. Um, just I realized I was focusing on the wrong opinions. Like there's always going to be people, there are already people that don't like me and I'm not really concerned about them. You know, there's people I don't like and I doubt highly that they spend a lot of time worrying about the fact that I don't like them. Also the like doubt, the fear of failure or being found out of fraud or to not have what it takes. Well, I mean, there's no like vetting process for having a YouTube channel. You literally just sign up for one. And so then you're a YouTuber. So like this idea that I had of like, oh, but it has to be this way or people are going to expect this. I don't have to worry about that. It is literally my YouTube channel. Why am I worrying again? Worrying about the wrong things, ma'am. Okay, from that same H&B palette, I'm going to go in with the shade chocolate now and smudge this out a little bit more and it's not just been imposter syndrome that's been making it difficult for me to make videos um i'll be honest when this first coronavirus thing popped off i really didn't think it was going to be that substantial of an issue but then and i don't want to get political here okay so this is not a political statement it's just how i feel and if you disagree that's great for you um it just really stressed me out. And honestly, the state of things as they are in the United States currently stresses me out as well. So it's kind of like, does anybody care about makeup right now? But they do. And you know, just because things are stressful doesn't mean I have to stop doing things that I, I genuinely enjoy. Like, you know, that's, I've kind of realized I was falling back into old thinking patterns of like worrying is actually work. It doesn't, it doesn't help anything other than, you know, raise your blood pressure and stress levels. And then in the middle of this coronavirus thing, pandemic.
pandemic, if you will, or if you won't call it what it is. Um, my parents got it and then me and my fiance got it. So it's just, you know, add all of that. I've been trying to plan a wedding in the middle of all this. It's just a whole, a whole thing. It's just a whole mess and it's a lot of stress. And so I realized, like I said, I was falling back into old thought patterns of like worrying is work, but it, and it is in a certain extent, but it's keeping me away from like work that is beneficial, not just work for the sake of working. And because of that old mindset, I was starting to doubt my abilities and my like belonging here and like who gave me the right. I mean, who gave me the right? Well, who gives anyone the right to have a YouTube or an Instagram and put their opinion out in the world? And is anybody really gonna confront me on who gave me the right? Probably not. And if they did, again, it's kind of one of those things like, who would these people be? And nobody that I, nobody whose opinion I care about has had anything but positive things to say about my YouTube endeavor. So when I was reading about imposter syndrome, one of the ways to counter it was to realize your strengths and what you do bring to the table and that's also hard for me because um that self-esteem you guys that it's it's rough sometimes out there <laughs> I'm just gonna say it I'm not looking for pity but it is a fact that sometimes I wake up and I'm like I don't know why in the world anyone likes what I put out I don't know why anyone in the world wants my opinion on things but then that's really rude to the people that have been really kind to me and have been supportive of me is to doubt, you know, that's kind of like doubting or calling them like, you got bad taste. And that's not nice to say to people who are trying to support you. It's also just not being very grateful. This is the same eyeliners earlier. I told you this wasn't gonna be smooth. Just being really ungrateful for the people that have supported me. And that's not whatever. I never want to be ungrateful for their my friends, my family, my the people that I don't even actually know that have reached out to me and said really kind and positive things. Why can't I listen to them more than the very few people that have had something negative to say? Another fun part about uh, imposter syndrome is perfectionism. And boy, did I feel just called right the fuck out when I saw that because huge perfectionist. I mean, not for other people. I have this weird double standard where everybody else gets away with whatever they want. And then me, I'm like, no, I could never though. Like you can, but I could never. <clears throat> Why though? Why though? So like I would overthink the hell out of everything. And you know, just like I was calling worrying work um, that was literally all I was doing was worrying about how to make everyone like me, um, how to make my Instagram do better. Like, oh, it's the wrong time to post, so I won't post at all. Oh, you know, I can't edit this perfectly, so I won't post it at all. Man, that eyelash is sticking up in a weird way. Somebody's going to hate it. I won't post it at all. And then, you know, there's just this vicious, like, self-fulfilling prophecy of it not it's not doing well so I'm not going to do more so it's not going to do well so I'm not going to do more so I'm going to get super defeated and then at the end of the day just call it quits because I got in my own head and got in my way and screwed it all up and no one was actually rooting I mean well I don't know if I'm right nobody wants to see me fail there might be people out there that do but again why do I care about people that don't care about me the answer is I don't fucking know. And I don't actually care. But my, it's one of those things where my behavior wasn't lining up with my goals. You know what I'm saying? Okay, last thing I think I'm going to throw a little bit of soul just to smudge it out, smoke it out just a little bit. It's been rainy again and it's making me feel all the, you know, Seattle grunge vibes or whatever. All right, well, now that it looks like I've been punched in both eyes, I think we're going to call that good. <laughs> Um, I'm going to prime my face with the Farsali Liquid Glass Radiance something serum, scarum, whatever. Psst. Sorry, I went rogue and I did my face because I kind of figured that might be boring and also difficult for me to talk through. So um, I'll put everything I use down in the description bar, but I, <laughs> I use like 5 million different concealers because I'm a problem. <laughs> um, for my under eyes, I use the Revolution Pro Ultimate Coverage Crease Proof Concealer. 
crease proof concealer in the shades C1 and C.01 of these guys. And then for the rest of my face, I did a combination of this Juvia's Place Eye Magic Concealer in the shade 21 and the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer in Satin Finish in the shade Light Peach. Okay, I <laughs> totally brain dumped what the fuck I was saying, but I think I was talking about perfectionism as it pertains to imposter syndrome. <clears throat> and for me, like, I would pick things apart to the point where I hated them. Like, I would absolutely, like, everything would be fine. And then I would be like, oh my god, that eyelash is uneven. Or my eyebrow doesn't look like the other eyebrow. Or I didn't blend my eyeshadow exactly perfectly enough. And then I, I, this goes back with my, like, weird double standard that only works for other people. Um, no one else's shit is perfect either. And if it is, it's likely filtered, which I, I don't care if people filter their shit. I mean, I edit my photos, like, color-wise. But, like, I don't edit out zits. I don't edit out my wrinkles. Again, don't care if you do. I just don't because it fucks me up mentally, man. Um, so as awkwardly as humanly possible. I'm gonna throw this blush is also an H&B Cosmetics uh, Dare to be Different blush and self-made. So yeah, I was just picking things apart just to pick them apart. Like I was picking them apart until I hated, hated, hated it. And then I would post it. And then somehow I would come to the conclusion that nothing, like literally nothing is better than imperfect. Like no content is better than putting up something that isn't exactly perfect, which is stupid. And doesn't make any sense at all. But I didn't say any of this made sense. And like, again, like no one else was being as critical of my things as I was. Like no one was being that critical. I was just being super critical of myself for really just no good reason. And honestly, like I think I saw it somewhere and I can't remember where it was. But it was uh, some quote or a line that said basically um, perfectionism is insecurity with lipstick on. And I was like, how dare you? <laughs> Um, but yeah, it totally 100% was for me. I was just picking things apart and being nitpicky and being like, not good enough, not good enough out of like, just fear, you know? And it, it's also kind of like a self-sabotage thing, which like, why was I, why, why, why do I do this? Why, why am I this way? And so another part about imposter syndrome and like dealing with it is not only recognizing your strengths and like what you bring to the table, but like being grateful for what you have, like for the positive feedback that you've gotten and like acknowledging uh, not only your strengths, but like your successes, which was also like, I had to sit down and think about all the really nice people that have gone out of their way to support me, have gone out of their way to say nice things, have, you know, constantly commented and like shared my posts and things like that. And and the people that, like, for example, like, my, all the stuff I post about Hashimoto's, that has helped a lot of people, which, I mean, I'm not trying to say, like, oh, I have helped so many people, but I truly can't put a number on how many messages I'll get randomly about, like, oh my god, I heard your podcast that you did about Hashimoto's, or I saw your YouTube video about Hashimoto's, and it helped me so much with all of these things, and that makes me feel really good. Like, that's the whole reason I started this YouTube, is to help people, because I like helping people, and it makes me feel good. And then I was, like, getting in my own head and being like, but you're not helping enough people, and you're not helping people good enough, and so you should just, like, fucking quit. Another awkward transition. <laughs> I'm at least upholding that promise, that this will be awkward. Um, I'm gonna put the elf this is from their e.l.f. Retro Paradise collection, the multi-dimensional face and body shimmer in the shade Luna. All over the face. I think also for the sake of time and the fact that I won't be able to talk while I'm doing it, I'm going to finish my brows, throw on some mascara, probably some lashes, and then I'll come back and like try and put a cherry on top of this shit show. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right. I think I decided to forego the eyelashes today. I mean, I have eyelashes. But I didn't want to put any fake ones on. Just because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of feeling the no eyelashes thing. Or well, <laughs> no eyelashes. I'll just take them all off. I'm, I'm feeling the um, just my own eyelashes thing. All right. So, like, let's try and wrap all of this 
jumbled, I don't even know what mess up. Um, so maybe I can like move on from this and like, you know, just give my per myself permission to like make my weird, awkward YouTube videos and be cool with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, honestly, a lot, I mean, it's been more than just imposter syndrome. Like I said, the coronavirus thing has really stressed me out. Just the state of the world, to be completely honest, is stressful to me. But one thing I did realize when I got sick with, uh, when I caught the coronavirus, novel coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, the Rona, um, and I couldn't do anything but just lay around, I felt really stupid. I felt like I had all I could think of was all these ideas that I would like to do with my makeup and videos that I would like to make. And I couldn't make them because I was sick and I felt terrible. And then I realized like I've wasted a lot of time worrying. I've wasted a lot of time being concerned what other people might think to the point where like, I don't promote my fa my Facebook. <laughs> I don't promote my YouTube channel that well because for a while I was like nervous that somebody would find out and make fun of me for it. And then that never happened. Like none of my friends have been anything but positive. Even people that I don't even know me that well uh, have been nothing but positive and kind and supportive about me doing this. So like I was just getting in my own way. And then I was also prioritizing the wrong opinions. Like no, not, no one is liked by everyone. There's no one out there. Maybe like David Attenborough, but then again, probably not, you know, like I, I'm not going to be liked by everyone. I am not for everyone. And that's okay because the people that I am for, I'm for, you know, you're either probably going to love me or you're going to hate me. And honestly, I would understand both ways. Uh, and you know, it's nothing personal. I don't think it is anyway. And I just realized it was really stupid for me to prioritize the opinions of people that don't like me. When, if you were to ask me what I do, I care about people that don't like me. N no, I mean, I wish you the best and I wish you'd change your mind. But uh, I can't make you and everyone's entitled to their own opinions. And like the whole idea of like who asked me or who gave me the right. Well, pff, man, anyone can sign up for YouTube. Anyone can make a YouTube channel. So why do I need the right? You know, why do I need permission from somebody else? I don't need permission from anyone else to do anything else in my life. So why do I need permission from someone else to do YouTube? And, and then who would be that person that would give me that permission. So it was a completely like unfulfilling thought process. And then just, you know, reaching out to my peers and people I consider my peers or people who I admire and look up to whose Instagrams and YouTubes are pretty successful. And, you know, taking their constructive criticism and also their praise. Like, I'm really weird about compliments. Um, I don't handle them well. If you compliment me in person, I'm likely to freeze up and be like, oh, thank you. <laughs> so it's hard for me to accept compliments, but I, I have to, you know, because otherwise that's, that's rude to the person that's giving me compliments. It's rude to the people who have supported me for me to be like, no one wants to see this. Well, that's not true because I only started this YouTube because I had enough friends tell me that I should and enough people ask me why I haven't. So here I am. They gave me permission. If I needed permission, why can't I take it from the people that support me? And ultimately too, one thing, and I think I've said this in so many videos and I'll probably keep saying it cause I really, I just, I believe in it a lot is find a, professional, like a therapist. I mean, I use BetterHelp. I'm not sponsored. Wish I was. That would be great, but I'm not. And I can't tell you how much it's helped me. It really has. It helps. It's helped me with so many other aspects of my life. So, you know, if you're not, if nothing you're reading online or doing, trying to implement yourself is working, there is no shame in asking for help. In fact, it's more embarrassing to not ask for help and know you need it and know where to get it and just be stubborn and keep fucking it up because you just don't want to ask for help. Like that's it. That's what's hanging you up. Asking for help, please. I know I struggle asking for help. It's a, it's a thing. I'm working on it. Just like I'm working on a whole lot of other things. But I think just acknowledging that while I enjoy this, it does bring a certain amount of anxiety and then questions. And then it allows me the opportunity to go down these crazy rabbit holes of what ifs that haven't happened. And even the ones that have, 
you know, once somebody's negative to me, it's easier for me. Like in the moment, of course, it might hurt. But after the fact, it's easier for me to just be like, you know what? That person's clearly not in a good place in their life because happy people don't hurt other people. Happy people aren't mean to other people, especially strangers on the internet. Um, or somebody you just don't really even know. Like, you're just not mean. Like, happy people, kind people aren't mean and nasty, period. And let alone on the internet. So... When I think about it from that standpoint, um, that person's probably hurting. That person's life might not be that great. Whatever it is. Or, I mean, don't don't misconstrue this as like, I'm so amazing. Uh, but this is something my mom used to tell me and it didn't make sense. But it was, you know, along the lines of like, someone who's intimidated by you is going to try and kill the thing in you that they feel like they lack. So don't let them. And by not making YouTube videos or Instagram posts because of those people. I'm letting those people win. So, so anyway, um, if you're still here <laughs> after this whole weird ass video and my entirely too long of a break, I really appreciate it. If you have reached out to me at all, please know that it means the world to me. It genuinely makes my day. I mean, every time I get an email saying I have a new YouTube subscriber, every time I get an email saying I have a new comment, it, it really does mean the world to me and it makes me happy if you reach out to me on Instagram, if you have reached out to me on Instagram and we've talked at all and I've been able to help you with anything, please know that that genuinely makes my life. Um, and I wanna keep doing it. I've found that helping people also helps me. So please don't hesitate to reach out. If there's anything that I've said that struck a chord with you, I'd love to hear about it. Um, if you've struggled with imposter syndrome and you found something that's really helped you manage it or overcome it, leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Um, that being said, I think I'm going to wrap this up for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope something I said helped, or at least you had a good time watching me make a fool of myself. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to put all my socials in the description box below. Please reach out to me on Instagram if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say I won't take another break because clearly I cannot be trusted to keep that end of the bargain up. But um, hopefully I'll see you guys sooner rather than later. So take care.